Hello, everybody. I am Eric J. Olson, your host for this live episode of the Managing Partners podcast. On this podcast, we interview America's top managing partners to find out how they're running their law firms, how they're growing their law firms, and what they're doing to keep their case pipeline full. And today, also from Virginia, we have John Whitbeck. Hey, John. How are you? Good. It's not often that I talk to someone from Virginia, so I, I like this. And you're, you're going to be in Virginia Beach soon, too. I am. One of my favorite cities. All right. I like that. Well, let me tell the audience about you. John Whitbeck Jr. is the founder of Whitbeck Bennett. His practice focuses on family law, special education law, and mental health law. He regularly practices in several jurisdictions in the Northern Virginia area. He has also been certified as an expert witness in litigation. Mr. Whitbeck attended law school at the George Mason University at George Mason University, where he was a member of the Moot Court Board, the Trial Advocacy Team, and the George Mason Law and Mental Illness Clinic. John, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much. Well, tell us a little bit more about that last part, uh, in particular, the, the mental illness clinic. Right. It, you know, George Mason at one point had this incredible program where third year practice certificate holding students could actually represent real clients in mental health crisis cases. And then after after I graduated, I took it over as the director and uh, about eight years. So I was a professor of mental health law at George Mason. And then we ran that clinic. And best training I got in law school to be a litigator was that clinic. And so it, it helped me find my passion for mental health uh, issues and mental health law. Which continues to today, right? So can you tell us a little bit more about you and your firm? Yeah, so we're, we're primarily a domestic relations firm. I mean, that's what we do. And we just have a unique addition to that practice in what we call mental health law, which in a nutshell is all about finding strategies to get people the help they need in an imperfect system. Mental health is a stig stigma. It's a crisis. Uh, all the other adjectives I can use to, to underscore how important it is that we address this healthcare issue. And pretty much every domestic relations case touches mental health in some way. Even if it's just a really uncontested divorce where everybody agrees on everything, you're still stressed about it. You still are depressed about the loss of your marriage. All the things that happen with you know, high conflict divorces also happen in low conflict divorces. So it's one of the differentiators we've used all through our entire existence as a firm and then my entire career to say, you know, this is why we're unique among all other domestic relations firms. Yeah, we talk with a lot of family lawyers. We have a lot of uh, family law firm clients. Um, I I don't recall hearing one that also adds in the the, the mental uh, illness counseling kind of aspect at all. So, are, are you are you aware of many others that have done that? No, I'm not. Yeah, as far as I know, I'm the only attorney in private practice that regularly advertises that as a as a practice area, uh, and it's there's. Plenty of mental health attorneys that, that work for nonprofits and agencies and different things. But in terms of just really focusing on a real practice area, that's one that we uh, I'm, I'm struggling to think of anyone else. Um, there are firms that do, you know, that represent psychology uh, mm -hmm. practices and psychiatrists and whatnot in HIPAA and different things like that. But in terms of people, crisis situations, getting the people the help they need, that's that's what we focus on. That's great. I love it. So. A lot of this podcast is focused on growing law firms and in particular uh, marketing. So uh, besides referrals, what are some different ways that you go about getting new clients for your firm? You know, we have this sort of matrix around marketing that we that we go with. And it's everything from the, you know, Yeti that I drink out of every day that we give away as gifts to Google AdWords. And, and, and so it, when, when we bring on new partners, we call them lateral partners. When we bring on new partners, part of the selling point is we're going to do um, activities such as CLEs or webinars or in-person lectures. We're going to do brand recognition things like participation in the community, a lot of charitable work. We're going to um, ensure that, you know, our social media centers around you. Video, social media um, uh, is, is pretty much the future now. Um, but your good old fashioned website, which I can't believe I'm saying that because I remember when there was no Internet, uh, <laughs> your website is the center of the universe in your practice and everything you do tries to drive people to it. And so 
you know, I, I really believe that uh, referrals are probably the best measure of your success as a firm. But when you're you're trying to get that 50 50, which is what our goal is, 50 percent referrals, 50 percent coming in from other sources like online SEO, whatnot, uh, you're doing really well. And that's about where we're at. It's interesting that you say that uh, the 50 50 split. I, I hadn't heard that from one of our other guests, uh, but I like it. And and I think a lot of times, especially the law firms that rely on just referrals, um, they, they may hear that as, well, are you lowering your referral expectation? And I think that's not the case. You're raising your the expectation of other lead sources. Right. Is that right? Right. Yeah. And lead sources are interesting because, you know, we're constantly trying to improve our, our conversion. So, you know, a lead comes in and, and intake in our firm is a big deal. We have an entire group called client services and all they do is our intake process. And then they kind of serve as sort of a concierge type, uh, you know, what do you need? You know, uh, you know, are you doing okay? Do you feel like we're being responsive enough? And after it's over, you know, how was your experience? We use the NPS system, uh, to, you know, in terms of rating. And so we're really committed to the client experience. And so when we're doing our, you know, intake process, we're looking at, how, you know, our data that we look at is how are we converting leads, as we call them, in, into calls, calls into consults and consults into clients. And, you know, there's a lot that comes in online that that doesn't convert. It, it's That's the hardest part. Referrals are pretty much automatic. They, they, their brother, their sister, their best friend, their, their, their new boyfriend, whatever it is, is referring them. They want to talk to you and they want they're probably going to hire you. But folks that are finding you online or other sources are shopping around a little bit. And, and sometimes it's as simple as the consult fee is a reason that people don't want to uh, want to come in. So um, we're constantly trying to improve that. You know, what's 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 our ways we can increase those conversions. And uh, so far for us, it's worked really well. That's great. Um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned a few minutes ago was social media and how that's really had an increased uh, role or increased visibility when it comes to your marketing. What is one thing that's working well for you right now in social media? Well, like I said, everything you do in social media is you want to drive to your your website. So we, we, we tend to find the biggest hits on our social media come from our blogs. Uh, that, that is by far the most um, hmm. productive use of our time. Our attorneys write our blogs. We don't have ghost writers and, and whatnot. But we have a, a, a requirement of the, the attorneys. It's a loose requirement. We don't punish them if they don't do it. But, you know, it's like, look, we want you to write a number of blogs. We want that branding. And I'll just sometimes get a really interesting idea. Um, you know, how does COVID-19 affect your custody case? Or what is what is mental health? Uh, you know, how does mental health impact your divorce case? Things like that. And I'll just sit down for 20 minutes and put something down there. And those things tend to get the best. ROI in terms of your time and your and your your money spent on social media. Nice. Now, how, how do you take that blog, which traditionally lives on your website, how do you get that to produce in social media land, right? Facebook, Instagram, things like that. Well, so so LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, you know, you know, someday we, you know, there's a great lawyer uh, TikTok uh, account that I that I follow. Who? Which who, one is it? Um, Law by Mike or yeah, five point five million followers. I'm familiar. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. What he does is incredible, and that's how you use social media. Yeah. But, but yeah. basically, you know, the, the 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 big four: Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn for a business. Um, and you, it's as simple as posting it, and then I promote. I have a lot of. I'm very active personally on social media, you know, and and it, and those are the ones that get the most hits. And look, I mean, you know, in 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 the the other world of marketing. Uh, that, 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 you know, that, that exists out there in, you know, heavy digital, like politics and nonprofits and all the, that kind of world, you know, social media is a lot bigger than it is in the legal world. Uh, people just don't find lawyers on social media as much as, as, as they do in other areas where you're, where you're heavy marketing. But, um, you know, I think we really need as lawyers to commit to that. And we're always 10 years behind everybody anyway, but we really need to commit to that. Cause I think, the modern client in Gen Z and millennial uh, generation is going to find us only on social media. They're just not going to find it. There's no full books are gone. Um, and, 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 you know, Gen X clients are sort of a, a hybrid combo. Um, but people are very sophisticated. Clients are very sophisticated. You got to keep up with it. And, and we do a really good job of that, I think, in our firm. 
I think it's great advice. And one of the words that you used before was you have to commit something like that. You said um, you have to commit. And you mentioned that your, your, your lawyers, you have a requirement for them to blog. It's not necessarily enforced, but you have an expectation of them that they blog. And right. then for something like Law by Mike, who has 5.5 fall 5.5 million followers on TikTok at the last time I checked and 500,000 on Instagram. Uh, I found him just by looking for lawyers and he popped right up. Yep. And uh, so like people are discovering lawyers on social media, but that like what he's doing, that's a massive commitment. And I've seen stories that he's posted on Instagram where he talks about how we just got done filming all day. So imagine yeah. like filming all day, once a week, maybe, you know, a couple of days a month. Uh, it's a commitment. How, yeah. how do you, how have you kind of balanced the commitment that's required to, to what you res expect results wise? Right. right. Well, this goes directly to the heart of our firm's philosophy and how we do business. We, we are, our goal is to be the national law firm, national domestic relations law firm that serves both men and women. And that commitment requires lawyers to admit and myself included that we're not the best business people, period. And so what we do is we try to strive for as much lawyerless operations as possible. So, for example, we have a CEO, controller, mm -hmm. HR, uh, everything, you know, stuff like websites and whether the copy machine needs to be serviced and ordering, you know, letterhead. All that in a small firm is, is typically overseen by the managing partner or, you know, multiple partners, whatever. We eliminate all that. So when I'm talking to a what we call, like, like I said earlier, lateral partner that I want to bring into the firm and I want to bring their practice in the firm. I say, look, think of all the hours you spend on stuff that is unrelated to practicing law. Wouldn't you love to get rid of that? And that's that's our firm philosophy is we we recognize that the best use of a lawyer's time is doing legal work. The best use of staff is doing non-legal work. And we try to push as much of the non-legal work off into positions and pay people what they're worth in order to avoid that. And that's how we, the commitment. So my marketing team, which we have a, we have a full-time marketing director. Um, they handle all that and we show up, make a video and we're done. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. No, that's great. I, I like the, how you've articulated the separation between the business of the law firm and, and, you know, running the actual practice. That's right. Yeah. When, when it, when it comes to your marketing, what is something that you've recently realized has not been working the way that you would like it to? Google AdWords. Um, you know, it's we're doing really great. Uh, our, to give you an idea, uh, you know, we were uh, in, we started this firm April 15, 2020, and we had two lawyers and now we're up to 20 on Monday. So our online presence has been exceptional, um, but I always feel like Google AdWords could be better. Um, it's a great product. Google's um, ability to reach folks is incredible. It's just, it's, it's mind boggling, but you know, there's so many people using the word divorce, uh, you know, obviously, and there's so much competition out there. There's a lot of domestic relations firms that differentiator is always hard to find. And I'm never satisfied with just, you know, X number per month. I want more, I want more. And so um, that would be the one area I would say I'd like to improve on. Um, but when you, you're 10 times larger than you were, you know, over a year ago, I think you're, you're, uh, you're on the right track. So you're doing, you're doing well, but I, I know the feeling you want more, right? It's um, never enough. You look back <laughs> well, when I, you look back. Yeah. When, as a litigator, you know, I, when you're in domestic relations, you can't just be about, you know, the, the business of law and making money and everything. You're dealing with people all the time. And I want there to be zero complaints in the firm. There's always going to be clients that complain. There's nothing you can do about that. There's always going to be unfortunate, you know, opposing counsel who are hard to deal with. There's nothing you can do about that. But if it's one a year, you know, it's one too many for me. And, and, and so we're always trying to work towards that. And you know, look, if I have 50 new leads coming in a day, I want a hundred. And, and that's just, you know, that's just my personality. And that's the, our firm philosophy. I love it. No, I think it's great. So, so speaking about more, you, you've mentioned that you want to be a, a national law firm. Um, that'll probably take a, a little while. I'm guessing you have some sort of a plan in place. What's kind of your next few steps? Yeah. So what we do, um, our, our, our lateral moves are designed to get into markets that we want to be in. Uh, I grew up in the uh, great state of California. I'd love to have an office in my home area in the Bay Area outside of San Francisco, uh, Alameda County. 
um, Texas, uh, uh, Florida, New York are the big ones. But look, we have an office in Oklahoma City uh, and we have an office in Wilmington, Delaware. And these are just because we found incredible lawyers who were willing to join, loved our philosophy, loved what we were about. And so our that's what we do. We try to find like minded individuals that understand the business of law is something harder than the practice of law. And we want to get them back to practicing law and, and take that over. So, you know, that's how we got Maryland um, uh, in place, Maryland, Maryland D.C. Uh, and then, you know, our Richmond office, which uh, really is our launching pad to the, the entire Commonwealth of Virginia and doing cases all over now. Um, it all comes from that. And that's our, our when I say we want to be national. It really is about you know, acquiring these law firms and merging with them uh, and, and building this uh, national domestic relations brand with a small town feel. You know, domestic relations is a very intimate part of the law. So we're not going to be this large corporate firm. You can see I'm, I'm wearing a you know, quarter zip. Uh, you know, our firm is all about people. And when you walk into a Whitbeck Bennett office in Oklahoma, there's three lawyers. It's not this giant corporate you know, feeling thing. No, it feels like a small town law firm it just happens to be branded along with this law firm that originated in Virginia. And, and that's, we need to keep it that way. That needs to be our, our, the feel for a client. So they're not feeling like they're, they're ignored. They feel like that they, they've, they feel like they're the most important in the world to us every time they come in. Because they are. No, that's great. I love it. Actually, sure. I have a question. One question about that strategy where you, when you open a new office in a, in a new city, like uh, you, you mentioned Richmond, which is an hour and a half away from me. Uh, yeah. are, are you um, are you opening like in a, in a virtual co-working space or do you actually get your own space? Yeah, it's a, we, we it's a combo of both. Um, so, uh, you know, I would have never hired a remote employee two years ago. I, I just didn't I didn't have experience with it. And as a lawyer, you figure they've got to be able. We are about we're getting to a point where we're almost going to be about equal in terms of remote and non remote employees. Yeah. Um, so, for example, I have uh, Virginia attorneys that work on our Virginia cases that live in Pennsylvania, North Carolina, and soon to be Ohio. So um, that world is that 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 old school way of thinking is done. I I, I don't want to rent more space. You know, I don't want to get a bigger office. I want my smaller, like I said, intimate setting for clients. So in order to do that, you got to figure out an, you either rent space that the client doesn't see, or you let people work remotely. And this remote thing is going to change the practice of law forever. I really do. And the other thing too is court is still a little bit remote. Um, it's mm -hmm. not, it's sort of moving back there, but you know, if any judges are listening in Virginia, please stay remote because you know, <laughs> the, the opportunity cost of court to a business is significant. Um, and for clients, it's much easier for a client to be in their living room or in my conference room and have the intimidating domestic relations case on the TV that it is for them to go to the building go through security, get dressed up, go in the courtroom and freak out that they're about to go through the hardest thing they've ever gone through, as opposed to, hey, sit down, I'll grab you a cup of coffee and we'll flip on the TV in about five minutes. I mean, yeah. that, think of the experience. If you're going through the, the worst thing in the world, I, 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 a, a, a loss of a loved one is probably the only analogy you can give to a divorce. You know, think about the, the comfort of doing that from your own home in some instances or in your attorney's office who you trust big difference. So um, that's that this remote thing is something that we are really committed to. And and our employees love it. Uh, you know, it, have, having someone in Richmond working on, you know, Leesburg uh, or, you know, someone in Pennsylvania working on Oklahoma. I mean, it's just so efficient. It's, it's great. We love it. Well, John, I, I love your energy. I love your vision. If someone would like to reach out and uh, ask you a question or maybe they have a case for you, what is a good way to get in touch with you? Email me directly. I mean, if you're a potential client in the states that we serve uh, or states we don't serve, we, we have relationships all over the country or you're a, a solo or small firm practitioner looking to, uh, you, know, you know, possibly uh, join up with a larger organization. Email me directly, jwhitbeck at wblaws.com. Uh, our website is wblaws.com and then 800-516-3964 uh, is our main number. Uh, and we, we I'd love to talk to you directly. Awesome. Thanks so much. All right, everybody. If you would like to check out more episodes like this, we have our entire backlog of Managing Partner Podcast episodes at ArrayLaw.com slash podcast. Each one is organized by state and by practice area, so you can find exactly what you're looking for. And if you're interested in digital marketing for your law firm, my firm, Array Digital, 
can be found at ArrayLaw.com. We explain our services, which are website design, SEO, online advertising, and social media. Well, thanks once again.